and welcome to Seth Thought DIY. This is a pretty new channel, so the quality is gonna be absolute garbage for I don't know, maybe forever. But anyway, so this is a Game Boy Advance SP. This is a limited edition. This is a 101 as well. So it's got that nice backlit screen. Now, stupid Italian hands. Actually, this had a snapped volume control thing. I replaced it with a very cheap method which only requires a replacement part, either from eBay or from a broken Game Boy Advance, which is probably from eBay as well, unless you have two. So, the problem with the Game Boy Advance SPs is that, so far, they all seem to have the plastic part as a single piece. So, it actually reaches inside the potentiometer that regulates the volume. So, if you manage to snap it, you cannot just get a new plastic thing. You will have to get an entire replacement part for it. So, this one... I've actually changed already and it works so the way I replaced this is that I used a pair of tweezers to do it and it's a very easy method but I don't think it's a good method because you can easily damage the replacement part permanently and even if you don't damage it permanently in a way that is unusable you will end up with a part which is weird to use. So even though the volume slider here works, as I've shown you, it does a weird thing. It gets stuck near the end, and then it clicks to the maximum position. So it feels a bit weird to use. Now, this is good as it is. I mean, the shell is bad, I'm gonna have to replace it. But the volume, I mean, could work just as it is, but I wanted to teach you guys something. So the main issue is that to remove the potentiometer, you might need a hotter station. But these, well, you can find cheap ones, but you maybe don't want to blow over 50 bucks into one of these just to get your volume working again. So I wanted to show you a way to do it without having to spend too much money on tools. Another issue is in the replacement parts itself, because finding it, finding a replacement for this, can actually be pretty expensive, or anyway relatively expensive, since you only get like one or two replacement parts for like four or five bucks, and sometimes you might not even be able to find them, and if you don't find them, well what do you do? You need uh, another Game Boy, though I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think you should buy another Game Boy just for this. So I realized that online they still sell DS Lite volume sliders. And they also sell these volume tabs here. They are advertised as being Game Boy Advance SP tabs. And while I guess it is true, I don't remember how it looks on the DS Lite. I don't, I don't think I don't think the DS Lite had this kind of volume slider. But the Game Boy Advance SP, as we said before, has this plastic part fused into the potentiometer. So I don't know why these are Game Boy Advance SP parts. Maybe maybe they're just saying that because they know that you can get a DS part and apply this on it, and it's just gonna work. They sell many of these, but I think that only some of them match in color. Like for example, these ones, they don't quite match, but they're good enough. Now we're gonna start disassembling the Game Boy Advance. So you're gonna need a tri-wing screwdriver, and you're gonna just unscrew all these screws here if they, if my Italian hands allow me to pick them up. So, we're gonna un unscrew all the screws in here and 
there's gonna be four here and then there's gonna be another one here this one is shorter as you can probably tell it's shorter so remember that it goes here so the Game Boy Advance SP actually doesn't use Phillips screws it uses JIS or JIS I don't know how it's pronounced but a Phillips screwdriver if it's all you have it's gonna work just fine there is a one last tri wing screw here it's also shorter it's just as long as the one from before so since they're the same length those two can be mixed so the motherboard is held in place by three screws and these ones well those three ones are all the same but they are just screws so remember that and then you can lift the motherboard then you have to pry the flex cable holder for the display well I used my fingernail here but you can use something else if you want you can use a tool so a way you can do this if this snaps is you can get you can push it all the way to one side and then you can you have to bend the two metal thingies that come from this end you have to bend them out just like this and then what you can do you can actually lift the metal cap here there we go and as you can see it's a single piece so then you get the new part and you put it back in and close it so there is a way to take this off without using a hot air station it is a bit uh, risky because here there's a resistor a very very tiny resistor and you don't want to remove that because if you're not good at doing this you're gonna lose it and it's gonna be gone and you might not be able to put it back in so a way to do this is to get your solder and melt a lot of solder between these four contacts here so two here and two here you need to bridge them with a solder ball okay so a bridge two so it's bridged you can see one bridge here and one bridge here so then what you do now that you've breached them is you need to heat them up alternating so you do one then you do the other then you do one then you do the other you do one and while you're doing this you need to lift the thing so here you go now it's lifted and then what you're gonna want to do wait for it to cool down because I just burned myself by touching that and then you're gonna push it down and when you push it down you're gonna want to get some more solder and melt this off so there we go I melted it and lifted it and then there's another last one holding it in place you're gonna melt that one off too and there you go it's gone now so while I was doing this I actually ripped this contact here off it's not really that big of a problem I mean it could be if you do both of them because then you're gonna lose a ground I think now you're probably not gonna lose the ground but it's gonna hold in place a bit less firmly I also suggest you get one of these they're fairly cheap this is a iron tip cleaner and 
you just get your iron and do this. So after we've done this, you're gonna need your replacement part. But first, my solder bolt here kind of lifting from the circuit. I don't know if you can see that. But this is not gonna make me align the thing properly. So I've got some solder wick here. Oh my god, that flew off. So anyway, I've got some solder wick here. And what you're gonna wanna do is you want to put it on the solder and heat it up. As you do it, it's going to suck the old solder off the board. Be mindful of not, uh, you know, removing all the contacts from the board, because if another pad rips here, it might be the end. I suggest you get some alcohol, some 99% alcohol, so probably isopropyl alcohol, and you clean it up with a Q-tip, because there's gonna be a lot of flux from the desoldering. Now, you get your part, and as you can see, this one has every single leg sticking down, but I want the two legs here to stick to the side. So I'm just gonna get some pliers, and I'm gonna bend them. By the way, while you're soldering, try to not apply too much heat to the volume slider, otherwise it's gonna break. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna solder one side, one contact first. And then the opposite contact. gonna give it some time to cool down and then you're gonna do two more contacts always in a cross pattern if you can it's more stable of course you're gonna give it more time to rest and cool down and then you're gonna do the remaining ground contacts so now gonna want to put the, the volume thing on this little knob from the potentiometer so you're just gonna find the hole find the thing line them up and then you push it in and it's perfect now it's good as new do not put the screws back in by just lining them up and screwing them in you're gonna want to Put the screw in the hole and turn anti-clockwise until you hear and feel the screw drop back into the hole. And when you do, you screw it back in. So, now I'm gonna try the Game Boy for you and here we go. So now it works. It's all good. So there you have it. I hope this helps. And goodbye.